So many times we pray and we don't seem to get an answer. Why? Well, there are many explanations, many points. And we probably don't attempt to give all of them now. Later, throughout the course, we will go through those answers. Right now, probably we will attempt to get one or two answers. But when you pray, in the Bible, most of the prayers, a big percentage of the prayers, when they get an answer, answer to prayer is not an event. It is a process. It's not a second. It's not an instant. Very few times the answer comes in an instant. Most of the time comes in time. For instance, Abraham, it took 25 years to get an answer to his prayer. Moses, 40 years. Noah, 120 years. Joseph, 13 years. A quick answer, Daniel, three weeks. The angel comes to Daniel and says, it took three weeks because I had to fight the kings of Medes and Persians. So when Daniel started to pray, the angel started to work on the answer. When you start to pray, God starts working. And you don't see his work. So you may think that God doesn't answer, but he is working on it. You need to keep praying so God could keep working. And you see the answer later. Answer to prayer, most of the time it's a process. I'm going to give you an example. My wife likes Dazzling. That's a perfume made by Estee Lauder. It's a very nice perfume. Expensive too. And uh, it's different types. It is dazzling on a silver container or dazzling on gold container. She likes the gold. And uh, her birthday was coming. And I said to her, honey, why would I go and buy something that you don't like? Tell me what to buy to make sure that you like what, what, I, what I get for you. And she said, okay, honey, you know, my perfume, it's almost empty. Get me a new bottle of dazzling. I said, okay, well, I go to the mall. And when I asked them, they say, well, it was discontinued. So I went from store to store, from mall to mall. I went to Macy's. I made JC Penny and Coles and Sears, and all the malls in the area. Nobody had the perfume. And I promised my wife, I promised her, on your birthday, you will have a bottle, a new bottle of perfume, the, the one that you like. And I always keep my word. So what should I do? They have discontinued. They don't make it anymore. What should I do? I went online. I googled. I searched everywhere. No luck. Eventually, I found one on Amazon. And it was expensive. It was about $80 a little bottle. But I could not say to my wife, this is too expensive for you. Imagine what would happen, you know. She deserves a lot more than that. So I just kept quiet. I ordered it. And then I put a text to the seller. I said, make sure that it comes on this date. And I got a text back. Oh, it will come on that date. Don't worry. Oh, when people tell me don't worry, it bothers me. Because usually they don't even pay attention. They don't even listen to you when you talk. So I text it back. I am not joking. I am dead serious. It is my wife's birthday. So on that date, it has to be in the mail. Make sure that it's in the mail. If not, you'll pay for it. Text back. Oh, don't worry. Oh, again, they don't worry me. The date came. My wife's birthday. I go to the mail. I pick up the mail. All the letters, all the junk mail, everything. The bills. The perfume was not there. I thought maybe it comes to the deli different delivery, FedEx, UPS, who knows? It didn't come. So in the evening, I felt so bad. I promised my wife an answer. I promised my wife that I will get the perfume for her. And I didn't have the perfume. It's not that I didn't love her. It's not that I didn't order it. It's that people that I worked with, they didn't follow up. God has to work with people. And people are strong-willed, people are proud, people are stubborn. Like Angel Gabriel had to fight the kings of Medes and Persians. God respects people's choice. So God has to work with people until they are ready to give an answer, to work on something. And so, back to the story. I called Amazon and I talked to the manager and I said, listen, this is the text you can follow up. They promised to deliver the perfume. He says to me, oh, it was delivered. I says, no, it was not. I never received the perfume. Oh, yeah, you got it at 5 p.m. Nope, I didn't get anything at 5 p.m. 
So I asked him, tell me the address where you sent it. They sent it to a wrong address in a different city. Somebody got lucky, received the perfume for free. Though I texted them the proper address. By mistake, they didn't even pay attention. They sent it to a wrong address. So I told the manager, I promised my wife. And I told them, if you don't follow up, you will pay for it. I want you now to send two perfumes instead of one. I want you to send it overnight. Basically, I don't care how much you pay. Overnight, basically not five days, but I want it tomorrow to have it. And I want you to send me a $100 gift because of the inconvenience, because I didn't have the perfume on my wife's birthday. He said, oh, I cannot do that. I said, yeah, oh, yes, you can, because then I talk to your supervisor and then you get in trouble. It's your mistake. You need to fix it. He agreed. He sent me two perfumes overnight and not 100, but $50 gift card. I went to my wife that evening. I was red, my head down. I said, honey, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I did my best. And yet I work with people. So the perfume didn't come. Oh, she was not upset. She was not frustrated. She was not doubtful. I wonder, is he going to get me a perfume? She had peace. She had joy. She gave me a hug. She kissed me. I said, why are you so happy? You didn't get the answer. And my wife simply said, I know you. I know that if you promise something, you'll have no peace until you get it. I know for sure that if you promised, I'll get a perfume. So I have peace of mind. May not be today. It will be tomorrow. I am not worried. Indeed, next day she got two perfumes, not one. The reason we doubt God, when we don't seem to get an answer right away to our prayers, is because we don't know him. Our real problem is not the problem that we have, but a lack of knowledge of God. We don't know him enough. When you know him, when you, as my wife said, I know you. When we know him, when we understand his love, he gave Jesus. What would be easier, to give you a perfume or a job or to give his son to die on the cross? If he gave Jesus, he says in the book of Romans, how will he not also in Jesus give us all things? He gave Jesus. To give Jesus, he took the whole heaven. He took the greatest sacrifice in the universe. To give you a job, God just says and it happens. It's like when he said, let there be light. There was light. Or to the sea, be still. It was still. To give you something, an answer, it's easy. But he gave you the most difficult, most expensive gift, Jesus. If you know him, if you understand his love, if you understand his grace, if you understand his promises, God cannot lie because of his character. When he promised, you can rejoice. It is secure. Then you don't worry if the gift doesn't, if the answer doesn't seem to come today. You know it will surely come. You just wait and rejoice in faith like a child. When God promised, you can jump up and down and scream and rejoice and sing because it will certainly come. And it's going to be better than what you asked. It's going to be better than what you actually imagine. But you need to know your God. Therefore, the main goal would be not to get what you want to get, but rather get a profound knowledge of God because to know God is life eternal.